You're listening to Unity Online Radio. The voice of an awakening world. Welcome to the Yoga Hour, offering insights and practices for spiritually consciously living today. Here's your host, Yogacharya, Ellen Grace O'Brien. Good morning and welcome to the Yoga Hour, a time to open our hearts and minds to the infinite. I'm Dr. Laurel Trujillo, here today with our guest, Yogacharya Ellen Grace O'Brien, the founder and host of the Yoga Hour. Today, we'll be sharing some insights and time-tested practices from the ancient system of Kriya Yoga. As Many people know today yoga is a Sanskrit word, and although it may have associations with just stretching or some kind of physical exercise program, yoga is actually has a broader meaning. It means oneness, union, or unity, the bringing together of our attention and awareness with our essential spiritual nature to be restored to our original wholeness. Today, we'll be discussing Awaken Your Heart, the process of embodying the divine love and joy that is part of our soul nature. We'll be sharing poetry and practices that help us to open our hearts and deepen our ability for love and compassion. As many listeners know, Yogacharya Ellen Grace O'Brien is an internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher, author, poet, and the founder and spiritual director of the Center for Spiritual Enlightenment, a Kriya Yoga Meditation Center with headquarters in San Jose, California. Yogacharya teaches nationally and internationally and has received several community service awards, including the 2015 Mahatma Gandhi Award for the Promotion of Religious Pluralism. She is currently offering a year-long course online called Dharma 365, Dharma 365, which is a comprehensive immersion in Dharma studies and practices for discovering your higher purpose and living it every day with heart and meaning. You can find out more about Yogacharya's books, her teaching schedule, and other programs at two websites, Ellen Grace O'Brien. Dot com and Brian is with an A, EllenGraceO'Brien.com and CSECenter.org. Welcome, Yogacharya or Umaji. I'm delighted that we can have this conversation today on the Yoga Hour. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you facilitating it. Um, it's a joy to be able to talk about um, awakening our heart, um, awakening our essence of being, um, and learning to live from that deeper awareness. And it's really wonderful always to have you on as a guest. But before we begin our dialogue about awakening our hearts, let's begin with a brief meditation. Let's begin by turning our attention within, taking this moment out of our busy day to just be present here and now. Our breath is a wonderful tool to help us bring our attention and awareness to the present. Wherever we are and whatever we're doing. So let's start by taking a fully conscious breath. Just noticing as we inhale and exhale. Just observing our breath, not trying to change its natural flow. Cool air entering the nostrils. Warm air flowing out. Each inhale, we can dive within, and each exhale, we can relax. In this moment, as we dive within, let's drop our attention and awareness into our hearts. Let's just feel for a moment our capacity for love, our love of others, and our love of ourselves. This love radiates from the core of our being. 
as a quality of our essential nature. This essential nature, this one reality called by many names, is a support and substance of all that is. Right where we are, right here and now, this divine essence is present as you, as me, as everyone and everything. It's within us, between us, and all around us. Just by being present now and noticing, we can rest in this essence of our being. We notice thoughts and feelings as they arise and as they pass away. We feel the love that emanates from the essence of our being and allow it to pervade the mental field, the emotional nature, and the physical body. We abide in this love and let it overflow as blessing for all beings everywhere. Once again, Yogacharya or Umaji, welcome back to the Yoga Hour. It's always delightful to have you on as a guest. Thank before, you. Before we begin our discussion of Dharma, I'd like to have you read one of your poems from your book, The Moon Reminded Me. Why don't you go ahead and do that now? Absolutely. I was um, thinking since uh, the topic today is uh, to awaken our heart, that I would just begin with a very simple poem that really is an invitation into the depths of our being um, and the experience that is the mind becoming still and the heart, the essence of being, um, expanding. This is called, In the Heart is a Well. In the heart is a well filled with the sound of silence. In the heart is a well filled with the sound of silence. Drink from it. One taste changes everything. How do I know? The day I stopped sitting on the edge and fell in told me this. So, of course, this poem is about uh, surrender. It's about the direct experience of the divine self, which is um, beyond thought, beyond conception, beyond the limits of mind, Um So meditation, there's a shift that occurs. We move from concentration, from holding the mind to one point, um, to having our awareness become clear and steady and dropping in to what we could call the heart of our being, where it is pure and still. And that which we are is then revealed to us. Mm -hmm. That's so lovely. Thank you for reading that. And I did want to mention that um, I want to congratulate you on the recent recognition of The Moon Reminded Me, your book of poetry that was released last year, which the poem that you just read comes from. So The Moon Reminded Me uh, originally actually was, you know, started with an award, originally placed as a finalist for the 2016 Homebound Publications Poetry Prize and was published by them in 2017. And now it has been recognized as finalist in the 2018 Next Generation Indie Book Awards in the category of spirituality. So to have the book recognized for its art of poetry and its contribution to spiritual literature seems exactly right to me. Uh-huh. So Thank that's, you. congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, 
it's really fun to have that occur. And then you, you get a little medal, a little sticker. You know, you see the books, they have those gold stickers on them. And I've, I've since learned that authors call that book bling. So now we have some book bling for The Moon Reminded Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this conversation is the sixth in our series of conversations about Dharma, which we started in September of last year, 2017. For listeners who missed the earlier shows, they are available in the Yoga Hour archive at unity.fm slash the Yoga Hour. But for those who are just joining this series, Umaji, so let's talk about Dharma for a minute. So what is Dharma and why is it important? I think um, contemplating Dharma takes us to some of the fundamental questions about life that we should all be asking, but mysteriously enough, we often don't ask until some, perhaps some um, point in, in midlife or so, which is, you know, who am I really? What am I? And what is this life? And how does it work? And, uh, you know, what is God? Um, and those kinds of questions all point to this ancient Vedic understanding of Dharma, which is the cosmic order of of life itself, and it is the basis of all order in the universe, of spiritual law, of um, physical laws, moral, ethical laws, all come from Dharma, this this um, fundamental understanding of the universe as an emanation of this one reality. And uh, so Dharma is sometimes translated as duty, uh, or the the way of life, um, the way of awakening. Um, it, it really is the fundamental order of all things, which is cosmic uh, in its nature. Mm. So, way back when you first learned about Dharma, did, did learning about it make a difference in your life? If so, in what way? Oh, yeah, it was... I don't, it's just like I said, you know, sometimes it's possible for people to go through life without considering that really deep question. And, you know, in other words, what is this higher meaning of life and what is my purpose in it? You know, Dharma is also, um, of course, translated as purpose. You know, what is life about and why are we here and what is our connection to it? And, um, I, you know, I had a belief, I think, in some higher power. God that I, of course, didn't understand, um, but I had no sense that any of that was connected to me, mm-hmm. and so this idea of cosmic order and that we, what I learned from my guru, from my teacher, Roy Eugene Davis, is that there is this power that uh, emanates as uh, the universe and um, this this um, origin of the, the order of all things, and that our role is actually to learn to cooperate with it, to find our right place uh, in it, and to express you know what is ours to do in harmony with that. So, mm-hmm. I had never really thought about this idea of. Mm, this, the possibility that my life could, was an expression of that and that um, it was a natural expression of it and that um, my way of living was to learn more about that. I think, you know, I always felt that I was just on my own, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is the primary you know, point of view of, of ego. So, you know, I talked to a lot of people uh, who are on the spiritual path um, <clears throat> who actually had that experience. You know, you, you, you talk to them and they would say, well, yes, I, I certainly believe that life is spiritual and there's this uh, power that's alive and present and uh, permeates the universe. And then I say, well, what about you? And they say, well, you know, I'm on my own. <laughs> so you have to ask yourself, well, how does that happen? You know, how is this power and presence everywhere, but somehow, you know, you're like a little cutout in that um, 
puzzle of the universe and you're just, you know, uh, an individual entity operating on your own without that connection. So in answer to your question, it, it's a profound shift when you learn not only that there's this power that is uh, pervading the universe that is supporting everything towards its higher purpose, but that that power is operant in your life, that, that your life is not separate from that. It is a big outbreath, you know, you can let go of feeling like, you know, you're in charge of everything, which, which of course you're not, but it, it gives a, it makes a life really stressful and burdensome. When we have that thought. Mm, yes. So in addition to the guidelines for righteous living that you've just been talking about that apply to everyone, we each also have an individual dharma or svadharma. So what's the difference between these two? Well, I could sort of look at svadharma as a subset of dharma, and it's the way in which um, we fulfill our potential by living in harmony with that overarching natural order of things um, and its uh, spiritual purpose, you know, to bring all things to fruition. And for human beings, you know, our higher purpose is uh, to wake up. So whatever we are here to do individually that has to do with our particular duty in life, our responsibilities, our talents, our experience, our dreams, all of that is part of our uh, individual swadharma. But the purpose of that is the link to dharma, to this higher order and the greater awakening. So our our in, what we do as individuals should be the path of awakening for us, and indeed, uh, it is that. You know, it's it's like um, the way it, it's the way that we awaken. Mm. That's lovely. So, this conversation, the topic of this conversation, is about awakening our heart. So, what role does the heart play in guiding us toward our path in life, our svadharma? Well, of course, it depends. <clears throat> excuse me. It depends on how you um, define heart. Um, it's one of those words like love, of course, that has a very broad meaning, and people kind of interpret it um, differently. So, generally, in when I'm speaking of in the heart, like in the poem where I said, "In the heart, you know, is a well." I'm I'm talking about our essence of being, um, the soul, um, that which we are, and in, in in the core of our being, the truth of us, um, and so. Uh, uh, it, it's it's learning to um, adjust our viewpoint to come from that deeper reality of that um, that which we are, and opening to that which is beyond thought or you know things and of the material world beyond sense experience, and the heart being our guide there. Yes, and you know it's not um, the emotional heart, though. Of course, sometimes experiences uh, at that level can be an opening to what we could call the deeper heart, or you know, I've heard teachers refer to it as the heart mind. Um, mm. You know, that is comprehensive um, essence of being. Mm. So, my experience of poetry is that it can touch the heart directly in ways that cut through our thoughts. And that makes it a really lovely addition to our conversation about awakening our hearts. So what role do you see poetry playing in the process of heart awakening? Uh, Well, for me personally, um, poetry is a spiritual discipline. Um, It's about, you know, I would say opening my heart and my mind, you know, to the infinite, to that which the senses can point, but um, there's a necessity to go beyond. And so, uh, for me, poetry is a practice of deep looking, deep listening, um, the stillness of 
presence, um, being with an experience until you go through the experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, great poetry um, points us to something that is ineffable, something that the words, you know, cannot say. Um, Great poetry takes us to an experience, you know, whether it's, you know, whimsical or whether it's, you know, a great spiritual depth, it it takes us um, beyond words or even, you know, poetry that is just so full of words that they're tumbling off the page. Hmm. Even a poem like that, um, if we can listen deeply to it if, and if it's skillful, will take us to that awareness that is beyond words. Hmm. Wow, that's so well said. So speaking of poetry... Why don't we have another poem? Or maybe even we have time for two. Um, so this one um, that is called Rose and Azure Letters um, is is kind of a, what in, in the world of yoga would be a bhakti poem, which is a, a poem uh, of longing, you know, of the soul's longing to realize the divine beloved. And I wrote this poem when I was in India and many, many years ago, and I was there as a seeker. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was looking for God everywhere, of course, um, but only to be found, you know, in my own heart. And, um, but it, there are some places in uh, India where there are these beautiful, beautiful uh, sunrises and sunsets. Um, and so this was um, instigated by that view, this bhakti poem, poem of longing um, from the heart. Rose and azure letters. Hari. Those rose letters penned on azure skies, you slip daily at dawn under the door of my mind, called me from my home. Why hide from me now? Their fragrance still speaks. When night jasmine fills the air, I know not even the darkness escapes your call to bloom. When night jasmine fills the air, I know not even darkness escapes your call to bloom. That's really one of my favorite poems from the book. And um, I was, as part of the uh, Dharma 365 uh you know, series of, of uh, processes that you do as you go through the course. Um, I was getting up really early and, and watching the uh, sunrise. Um, and, of course, there's a lot of rose and azure at that time of day, uh-huh. you know, with the beautiful mm-hmm. sky, you know, as it's turning and sometimes the clouds. And, and I would often be called to read that poem as I got up really early and was watching the dawn. It's just a really, really beautiful one. Mm, yeah, thank you. I, you know, there's so much that is, is said in there, which is, um, you know, on the one hand, you know, I, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for this uh, divine presence, and I'm uh, looking at, uh, you know, the colors of dawn, and feeling this pull of my heart, and then um, there's the metaphor of the night jasmine which doesn't need the dawn uh, to bloom and so there's that paradox that you know we're looking in one place but very often that divine reality will show us something beyond something deeper so um uh, here we have the the sense of smell that comes in with the night jasmine and also the promise that um, that experience of the divine beloved is at hand and you don't need to look here and there for it in the very darkness itself in the call that you have for the divine beloved that um 
is already in bloom within you. You know, the teachings say, know that that which you seek is already seeking you. Mm, indeed. Oh, it's just really, really beautiful. So this was a poem that you wrote, you said, quite a while ago. Um, and uh, it just made me wonder about the poems in the book. So was this collection really from, you know, a, a very long time span in your life? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, there are some poems in here that were written decades ago. Um, some of them are revised in this collection. And then, you know, most of them are new. Mm. Um, but and there are some that were gems like that one <laughs> that, <laughs> that got revised and came in to here. And with that, unbelievably, we've already sped through and we've come to the break. If you're listening to the Yoga Hour with our special conversation today with Yogacharya Ellen Grace O'Brien, founder and regular host of the Yoga Hour. Yogacharya has published several books and audio programs about meditation, mindfulness, and spiritual living. Her current online course is Dharma 365, A Year of Living Purposefully. You can find out more about Yogacharya and her work on her websites, ellengraceobrien.com and csecenter.org. We welcome your comments and questions. You can contact us at yogahour at unity.fm. I'm Dr. Laurel Trujillo. When we come back from the break, we'll be exploring more about practices to awaken our hearts. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Discover the power within. Unity Online Radio. The voice of an awakening world. When listeners like you contribute to Unity Online Radio, you're making a positive difference in your life and the lives of other spiritual seekers. Go to unityonlineradio.org and click on Donate to make a one-time donation. Or sign up for monthly contributions. Thank you for your support. Here's Eric Butterworth with a Unity Mindful Moment. Unfortunately, religions have tended to present themselves as institutions instead of perceptions, something you join instead of a transcendence that you experience. We've tended to believe that God works exclusively through the machinery of an institution. So it is self-evident that most persons believe that you go to church to get close to God. The fact is, if God is present in the church, God is also present in the theater. God is present, period, because God is an online presence, everywhere present. So you don't go to church to get close to God. But you go to church, perhaps, hopefully, to be challenged to dig within yourself and to find that consciousness of the presence that is with you wherever you go. So that wherever you go, wherever you are, God is. To pick up the Eric Butterworth book, Practical Metaphysics, go to unity.org and click on shop. Here's a Unity Mindful Moment. Unity founder Charles Fillmore is quoted as saying, Here is a mental treatment guaranteed to cure every ill. Sit for half an hour every night and mentally forgive everyone against whom you have any ill will. The act of forgiveness is powerful medicine. Is there someone in your life that you can work on forgiving? Try this exercise tonight. To forgive is to set yourself free. Find out more about Unity at Unity.org. What if you could start each day with a positive outlook, remembering you are a divine expression of God? Daily Word is a booklet of daily devotionals offering positivity that's downright contagious. With a print subscription or by email, you can pause to reflect on how to practice spirituality in your human experience. Reading Daily Word takes about a minute a day, so you can feel uplifted every morning. Visit dailyword.com to subscribe. 
If you could talk to an angel, what would you say? Join Jerry Gavin every Monday at 5 p.m. Central for Angelic Connection. Jerry shares messages from his guardian angel, Margaret, in combination with ancient healing practices to teach people how to listen to their spirit. Jerry can help you strengthen your connection to the angelic realm and receive clear messages of help and healing. Call in and join the show every Monday on Unity Online Radio. Call now with your question or comment. 816-251-3555. That's 816-251-3555. You're listening to The Yoga Hour, Living the Eternal Way with your host, Yogacharya, Ellen Grace O'Brien. Welcome back to The Yoga Hour. I'm Dr. Laurel Trujillo here with the Yoga Hours director and host, Yogacharya O'Brien, and we're discussing practices to awaken our hearts. And speaking of that, Umaji, will you lead us off on this segment with another poem? Sure. Um, practices to awaken our hearts. So, here's one, just a short poem about waking, (laughs) waking up in the morning. It's called Waking. A prayer rises in my chest at dawn, sounds its way through my throat into the day, joins the chorus of finches outside the open window. The time for gratitude is early, Long before the train of forgetfulness arrives. I think I know that train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so as a spiritual practice, you know, there's there are many junctures in our day and um, moments that we can... Um, in a sense, make a spiritual practice. And of course, one of those profound moments is our moment of waking um, from sleep in the morning. And, um, you know, that's a, it's a very vulnerable time. It's a time when we kind of set a template for our, um, our, our way of being, you know, with the day. And so, if you're a busy person like I am, it, it's tempting to, you know, uh, wake up and then go right into the list for the day, you know, the to-do list. And, you yes. know, you ha- your, your feet have not even touched the floor. You just lay in bed and the mind swirls, you know, what day is this? And, you know, what do I have to do? And... <clears throat> And so, um, that's the time, you know, for a breath. It's the time for a prayer. It's the time, I think, you know, for gratitude for another day. Um, and to watch the consciousness with which we greet that day. You know, I always think of, there's a kind of two prayers for greeting the day, which is, you know, one is this gratitude prayer, which is like, oh, God, another day. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this opportunity, for this life, you know, for everything that is given. And then there's another prayer, um, which is, oh, God, another day. <laughs> uh, like, you know, it has has this heaviness, this burden, and, you know, who makes that choice? Well, we do. You know, we make it before we even get out of bed in the morning. And, you know, one choice is the choice of our full aliveness, and the other choice is that choice of forgetfulness. It's just hopping right onto the train of forgetfulness and, you know, forgetting that there is this um, spiritual mind-body connection that either lights up our life or dampens it down and darkens it so that's definitely a practice isn't it Mm -hmm. yes yeah even to notice you know which of those two prayers are you uttering first thing in the morning (laughs) absolutely yeah so 
the Kriya Yoga path, as you've taught me, <laughs> is the path of self-realization, of discovering who we really are. So can you say more about that? What is this goal of self-realization? Well, of course, it's to know the self, the divine self, the capital S self, uh, the truth of our existence being, and to know it, um, to know about it is useful, to have a map of what life is um, as one reality in expression, Um, but then to actually experience that directly, you know, beyond the limits of thought, beyond the limits of, you know, sense um, perception. So, you know, the the mystics say, you know, that kingdom of God is within you. Um, you're not going to see it, you know, here or there. You can't behold it with the eye or with the mind, but only with the eye of the heart. Mm-hmm. And that that means that the direct experience of the self, because it is unbounded, you know, cannot happen through the mind. You know, mind can be a doorway. It can take us to the door. But the opening of that door into the heart of reality, that opening of the door happens through grace. So our our spiritual practices um, prepare us, you know, take us to that doorway and then... You know, grace opens the door and we experience um, our own essence of being. And then we, we realize that which we are. We, we know it and we have experienced. And so it is real for us, not just a concept. Mm. Absolutely. So once we have that, or once we even read about it, once we know who we are as spiritual beings... How does the blossoming of the soul life come about? What is required of us? I think what is required of us um, is really the whole um, focus of what Kriya Yoga is um, and can be even defined, and that is intentional living. In other words, we we have to change the focus of our life. Um, When we're uh, operating from this uh, egoistic point of view, um, which is, I'm here on my own, you know, I need to do what I need to do to survive. Um, Life is always a battle, you know, we're always trying to win, um, and, and to maintain that sense of self or to prop up that sense of self or to defend that sense of self. Um, but when we have a commitment to be awake, um, then we begin to um, let go of that um, perspective that we are um, uh, uh, separate from the source, we we begin to surrender that and to contemplate, you know, how it is that that reality is the very um, uh, life of our life, the breath of our breath. Mm-hmm. So, but it it takes a commitment, you know, to shifting that viewpoint, um, beginning to arrange conditions in our life so that more and more we are experiencing that. So, you know, there's simple things that we do, like we meditate and we study and we, we cultivate uh, ways of living that are, are, we call dharmic, you know, that are in harmony with the way of the universe. But, you know, the the most important thing, uh, I think, is first that we make the commitment uh, to live uh, an awakened life. Hmm. Wow, that was just really beautiful. I love the way that you said that. So, um, one of the um, things that we need to develop then, if we're going to make that commitment you know, to living an awakened life, to being more awake uh, more of the time, is uh, self-discipline. So, what is the role of awakening our heart in practicing the self-discipline that is required on this spiritual path? Well, you know, as we contemplate the heart, you know, as our essence of being, 
or the soul. Um, we know, um, or the teachings tell us, and we can experience for ourselves that um, a quality, divine quality of our essence of our soul is joy is bliss, um, that is this higher happiness that is not uh, dependent on uh, conditions. And so, we you know, when we come onto this spiritual path, we, we learn something new about self-discipline and the awakening of the heart, which is yoga is actually awakening to the joy of our being. And so our heart, our essence is, is our comp, our compass or our, our feedback system. So, you know, we know when we are living in joy and when we're not. Hmm. And, um, and we know what um, fosters that joy and what does not. And, you know, perhaps early on, you know, we have to cultivate some discernment about that. You know, some things seem like they contribute to our joy in the beginning, but then later we find out, oh, you know, that that was not useful. Or other things that may feel hard in the beginning, you know, later we say, oh, that was the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. So it's it's learning how to refer to what I would call the heart, you know, as our compass, um, our joy, our joy meter, you know, learning what it, what it is that connects us um, to that divine bliss that is inherent, inherent to our being. Mm-hmm. I like that, the the meter, the joy meter. <laughs> mm-hmm. In the first segment, we discussed the importance of poetry as a means of awakening our hearts and as a way to lead us to our svadharma. What are some other practices that can help us to awaken our hearts? Well, I think, you know, we've mentioned, of course, meditation, which is a central practice because it... Um, is a way, it's an easy way, um, a simple way to clear the mind and to help us let go of our identification uh, with the body, with the mind, with the roles that we play. So uh, a regular meditation practice is uh, a great support. And along with that, of course, this cultivation of silence so that we can listen more deeply um, for inner guidance and for, as I was just saying, um, you know, what what nourishes the soul, what what brings joy, what makes us come alive. You know, we're we're always looking for um, that passionate aliveness, you know, and it's so easy to make the mistake that somehow that's that's going to come outside of us, you know. So many people spend years um, looking for, you know, what what makes them come alive, as if it's going to come from outside right. and, instead of from inside. So meditation helps us develop. Uh, that inner connection to the divine self, and um, and then of course there's the all the practices which yoga calls the yamas and niyamas for how to be in the world in a dharmic way, which is how to live in harmony with spiritual law, with moral law, with ethical law, and um, you know we 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 have the in- you know, intensive retreat that we're on every day of, uh, you know, spiritual retreat uh, uh, of the way that we live. You know, are we living nonviolently? Are we living truthfully? Are we, you know, generous? Um, You know, I mean, all these things uh, are part of our discipline of spiritual living. Mm. So, One practice that I personally find helpful in terms of um, awakening my heart is being outside in nature. Um, It's just so lovely to, um, I don't know, just feel like uh, I can soak it in through my skin. And you have some really lovely poems about being in nature. So would you share one of those with us? Oh, sure. Um, 
I have, maybe I'll share more than one. I have some short ones. Um, here's one, you know, that is just um, kind of um, <sighs> writing down the experience of how the connection with nature um, can be a revelation of divine presence. You know, nature shimmers with that presence and that full aliveness. And with the yoga practice, you know, you can begin to experience um, this connection to where, you know, nature is not an object, um, but it is um, that which we are inherently connected to. So um, this is a poem about sitting in snow mass, which is uh, in uh, Colorado, a beautiful um, monastery, and um, it's a holy place, snow mass. I spent the afternoon in heaven, brought a book along, bare necessity. Ah, serenity. Even heaven is not quiet. Mm. The aspens were singing psalms from Mount Sopris, thousand-tongued chorus, green upon green delight, song of the invisible one, announcing the now as only love can do. Be still, be still, I am. Hmm. Yeah, it's just, just really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so I could, it was, I could see it with you. <laughs> yeah, it's good. There was this afternoon, you know, that I had, of course, there at Snowmass, and I went to sit in this heavenly place, and um, it was kind of a joke, you know, that I brought my book along. You know, I was going <laughs> to read for some inspiration, but. Here, nature itself was singing, um, and the psalms, you know, are often the celebration of God's presence. Um, and I was sitting under these aspen trees that, that the leaves were all vibrating, you know, with the wind as is singing this, uh, holy song <laughs> in, in delight, you know, mirroring the beauty of Mount Sopris, which you could see from there. But I felt the song, of course, was singing of the one, you know, the one reality that, that was behind all of those elements, you know, the air, uh, the wind, and, um, the fire of light and beauty, the stillness of the mountain, the one, they're all singing of the one reality that is just uh, hidden from sight. Mm. That's beautiful. Let's do another. Okay. Um, there, this is a, this is a haiku, um, from my, experience in my garden and in my office at home I have a window that looks out into the back of the garden and you know we have little creatures that that walk uh, through there and this is what I saw one morning that became a haiku you know and that it was sort of picture the grayness of the winter garden you know not green but everything is kind of gray black squirrel Green walnut, Zen master in the garden, everything is clear. Mm. I can just <laughs> so, see that little squirrel with that walnut. <laughs> so we have some we have some black squirrels here, and they're they're quite um, different looking than the normal gray ones that we see. And mm. of course, this morning that black squirrel in this gray landscape and he he had this bright green walnut in his mouth and um it the sharpness of the color um just took me right into the present moment you know out of the gray dullness of mind um just into the reality of the now moment which nature can do you know mm. something surprises you in nature like that you know uh, just something c- 
comes and there's a moment of, ah, <laughs> and if you can be with that, ah, <laughs> that's the Zen moment, right? Yes. So for me, the, the squirrel in his little black coat, like the Zen master, <laughs> became the Roshi that said, you know, wake up. And uh, it was a, a beautiful <laughs> moment. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So um, let's do uh, let's do another. Let's just stick with it. We got about three more minutes. Okay. So you know, sometimes nature can bring uh, a question as well. Um, this one, this poem is. Um, is one that I wrote at the time of um, Passover. And there's a practice at Passover where you clean out all your cupboards and you get rid of anything that has yeast in it, (laughs) any of the bread or crackers or anything like that, because it symbolizes, um, you know, what rises into pride, right? So there's the whole Mm. symbology of the matzah at Passover, you know, that the the slaves um, took the unleavened bread into freedom. And so this poem is called Wings of Red. And do do we have time for me to read it still? Yes, absolutely. So um, first I want to say that in the in the Great Plains uh, of the U.S., um, where red wing blackbird um, populations have been abundant. The bird in Lakota language is known as Wablosa, which means wings of red. Mm. And its songs are described in Lakota as Toke Matana, Matani. And if that's translated as, Oh, that I might die. And as Nakun Mai and me and Mis. Ie, and please forgive my not knowing anything about Lakota, but this is how I think it sounds. Me too. Oh, that I might die. And me, me too. So this mm. bird, you know, for the Lakota brought this uh, awareness of the ephemeral, ephemeral nature of life. So all of that is in this poem called Wings of Red, taken from that beautiful a uh, Lakota name for the red wing blackbird. Wings of red sweep the corners of the heart with a feather, a breath, a sigh, a breeze of loving kindness. Offer seeds you find to blackbird. Let them be gold eye flash, red wing promise, dawn flight from bright grass. How else to forgive what we have done? Mm. So, this poem is about offering even our mistakes. Mm. You know, things that we perhaps have found unforgivable. To let them be transformed. You know, like you would take the breadcrumbs at Passover from the drawer and um, the teaching is to toss them outside, you know, <laughs> let the animals have them. And then, you know, what was once pride, you know, um, becomes transformed into something else. And so mm. here in the, you know, what you find, you offer up and uh, it becomes gold eye flash, you know, the awareness of the black bo- bird, the, the red And just closing up, and just closing up. <laughs> so was there, did you want to finish that thought? No, it's just... Um, that nature too can have that healing power. Um, it can be a place and a way that we make an offering. Mm. Oh, it's just really, really lovely. And with that, we've come to the end of the show. You've been listening to the Yoga Hour. It's been my pleasure to share this time with you. I'm Dr. Laurel Trujillo, here with our special guest, Yogacharya O'Brien, the founder and director of the Yoga Hour. We've been discussing practices to awaken your heart. This is the sixth conversation in our series on Dharma. If you missed the first five programs in this series, you can go to our archive at unity.fm slash the yoga hour. The dates to look for those programs are September 14th, October 5th, and November 9th, 2017, and then February 8th and April 5th of this year. 
Jagacharya O'Brien is an acclaimed spiritual teacher, author, and poet. The poetry book that she's been reading from today is The Moon Reminded Me, which is available at Amazon.com or at EllenGraceO'Brien.com. The online course that is available to start at any time is Dharma 365, A Year of Living Purposefully, which is also available at the EllenGraceO'Brien.com website. You can find out more about uh, other books, about Yogacharya's teaching schedule, and other programs at her website, EllenGraceO'Brien.com, and at csecenter.org. Thank you, Umaji, for this delightful conversation and for your wonderful book of poetry. Thank you so much, uh, Laurel. It's really been a joy to speak with you and to have this opportunity. And my um, my deep bows to all of the listeners of Yoga Hour who are so um, tuned in to living a dharmic life. Um, mm. I'm glad to be with you today. Mm. Join us next week for Moving Towards Peace, when my guest will be Dean Slider, meditation teacher and author of Fear Less, Living Beyond Fear, Anxiety, and Addiction. The Yoga Hour is a service project of the Center for Spiritual Enlightenment, a meditation center in the Kriya Yoga tradition. CSE welcomes people from all backgrounds who are seeking self and God realization. For more information about the Center for Spiritual Enlightenment, again, the website is csecenter.org. Remember to subscribe to the Yoga Hour podcast at iTunes or Stitcher. If you are enjoying the podcast, share it with a friend. Thank you to the Yoga Hour team, regular host, founder, and director that we've had on today, Yogacharya O'Brien. Assistant producers Ann Hayes and Sean Smith and Jeff Comfort in the sound booth. I look forward to being with you again. Get your Gachari O'Brien is away. Until then, remember to carry your own healing and wholeness within you. Share your peace and joy with all you meet. Thank you for listening. This is Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world.